So without any further ado, uh, let me um, introduce Yixin Cao, who is uh, the uh, head of our team in, in Lyon, and then she will um, briefly uh, introduce her team as well. So the floor is yours, Yixin, and, and team members. Thank you. Thank you, Paul, for this introduction. So very nice to meet you all, um, the River City Network friends. And uh, I will just uh, start sharing my screen so we can have... Um, can you see? Yes, we, we can see it. Okay. Can you see it on full screen now? Okay. I think so. Perfect. Uh, let me see. Okay, so good morning, good afternoon, and good uh, early morning uh, <laughs> to Brazil. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us today uh, for this uh, presentation from our studio in Lyon. Uh, so today, as you know, we, we, we are also a research team studying rivers. And in Lyon, we are studying a specific topic swimming or bathing in urban rivers. And here I give a topic of our project. Is it a solution for warming cities? And uh, so talking about our team, so we are a studio called Banyat Urbain, which means um, urban bathing in University of Lyon uh, in the LAPEX EMU. It's a laboratory uh, created by University of Lyon. So our team members, so first me, my name is Yixing Tao. I'm a postdoctor researcher at University of Lyon. Actually, I joined this studio um, from this year. And uh, I will also present you uh, Audrich Navral and, Navratil and Nicolas Rivière, uh, these two are also uh, part of our our studio. Uh, so Adrich, he's an associate professor specializing in hydrology and geomorphology from University of Lyon too. And Nicola, he's a professor of uh, hydrodynamics from the engineering school of Lyon called ANSA uh, from the Department of Mechanical Engineering. And and. Onoje, uh, unfortunately, she cannot be here today. She's a geographer working on, uh, also working in this topics related to uh, environment, city, society. She's the director of CNRS, the National uh, Research uh, Scientific Center in France. And finally, Victoria Chu, I believe uh, you already have met him, met her. So she's a professor of environmental law and water law and uh, uh, from the University of Lyon 3. So we have been working together with also with uh, River City Network and other members for this uh, coast action proposal preparation. And so, as you can see, we are uh, five people in total and all from very different disciplines working on this specific topic. So, so in our team, it's literally a very intensive interdisciplinary collaboration. And in the meantime, we also have interactions with stakeholders as well as policymakers, especially in Lyon. Uh, with transdisciplinary collaboration. So inter- and transdisciplinary methods are uh, the core of our studio's methodology. So first, I will have a short introduction about Lyon. So Lyon is a city in France. It's literally uh, a river city because the city is located at the confluence river confluence area of two rivers, Fon and Son. So from the map, you can see like kind of on the left side of the city is the river Son, and on the right is the river Hon. So Lyon is, has a let's say a deep river culture historically with these two rivers with interaction with the rivers. And it's also to the northwest of the French Alps. So the region has been some of the best connected waterways, has some of the best connected waterways in France, making it a key center for energy production, as well as historically very significant in Europe. And uh, the University of Lyon, actually, it kind of, it's kind of a 
Aliens. It's an academic community with in total 11 members and 24 associated institutions in Lyon and Saint Etienne. So, our team, uh, so we are from University of Lyon 2, 3, as well as ENS. So, all this university are part of University of Lyon. Uh, I know it's a bit complicated, but uh, that's a uh, uh, French system. Uh, so it's University of Lyon is France's second largest scientific hub with uh, 6,800 researchers. And so other fun facts about Lyon is the city is also considered the gastronomic capital of France, the birthplace of cinema, as well as a UNESCO World Heritage City. So it's a very beautiful city too. Um, so let's talk about our work. So to begin with, uh, I will talk about the origin of our studio, of this urban bathing studio in Lyon. So uh, to start with, that was a, a couple of years ago. The, the studio was actually initiated by a request from Lyon's firefighters uh, to the lab, to the lab in the University of Lyon because uh, the problem is every year in summer, uh, they have to rescue people, joint people from the urban rivers, even though in Lyon, swimming in the rivers is technically forbidden. But uh, what they found is that every year there were still people jumping in the river and unfortunately some were drowned. And so... That was the origin of the studio. So the fir first collaboration took place in 2022 with a master internship uh, funded by a institution called H2O in Lyon to study this drowning incidents in rivers. And so as I already introduced, it's despite it's forbidden, so there's high number of open water swimmers in Lyon with accidents often peaking during the summer. And because of climate change, the heat waves are expected to increase in frequency, not only in Lyon, but all over Europe. And on the other hand, river banks, as well as rivers, the waters are undergoing transformations in use and perception with the trend of river revitalization, restoration, urban transformation, etc. So from all this issues, our studio raised the question, can developing urban river swimming or bathing be a solution for warming cities? So this highly interdisciplinary question naturally led to the creation of a studio in the LabEx EMU from uh, the University of Lyon. So uh, there are two focus of our studio's work. The first focus, as it was initiated, is the drowning in urban rivers, managing the present while also planning for the future. So I, our hypothesis is that first, drowning incidents reflect the evolving relationships between people, the city, and its rivers. Drowning is also influenced, influenced by various factors, the biophysical bio factors, social cultural factor, and the technical factors. Understanding these mechanisms can enhance rescue efforts, improve risk prevention strategies, and inform policymakers in the short, medium, and long term. And in the meantime, uh, we have some photos here. They are kind of uh, some social initiatives, uh, mostly grassroots from bottom up to try to reintroduce swimming in the rivers in the city. So on the left, it's a lab, uh, it's an initiative in Paris a couple of years ago. In the middle is a network called Big Jump. So the idea is they promote people to jump into the river in the summer. So because on the other hand, there are more and more people uh, want to seek ways to swim in the rivers, especially in summer. So our, but there is, of course, uh, risks of drowning, the problem of, of security. So our working areas focus on first, who is the victim and how does the drowning occur? Second, what are the most effective rescue methods? Third, how and why should the body be recovered? 
So the second focus of our studio is a kind of looking forward phase. How will we we bathe or swim in Lyon and probably elsewhere in 2030 or 2040? So the hypothesis is based thing practice are shaped by past experience, cultural representations, lifestyle, and social cultural environment. And it's now uh, not only in Lyon, but all around Europe is reviving. And planning for the future of urban bathing requires understanding first the interaction between waterways in major cities and urban bathers, second, impact of urban development, social, spatial inequalities, and climate change impacts. So our key questions to study this phenomenon include what facilities encourage or discourage bathing, what makes a bathing site attractive or not attractive, how do different use complement or conflict with each other, such as uh, swimming, navigation, even agriculture, etc. How do water and environmental quality influence bathing practice and vice versa? So with all this uh, uh, our topics and the two focus this, our studio is working on, the research group uh, is growing too. So initial phase uh, in spring 2020, only uh, the firefighters as well as a few labs uh, in Lyon were involved and some schools too, and gradually it becomes a bigger group involving many different actors as well as laboratories. And this is a graph uh, who, whom have been involved in the fall 2023. We have, for example, just to uh, shortly introduce them, we have like national uh, actors such as the VNF, which is the French navigation that's already responsible for managing France inland waterways, as well as the ODF, which is a government-owned electric company in France. It's a national company too. We also have regional authorities of the region of Verne, Rhône d'Alpes, as well as the metropole of Lyon, the Grand Lyon, and CNR, which is the entity responsible for managing hydroelectric production, river transport, and ag agricultural reuse of the Hohne River. So we also uh, have local actors involved, such as the uh, Camp Back de Michibel Jonash, which is a park on the outskirts of Lyon, uh, covering large part of the Hohne River. And we also have uh, uh, as you can see in the bottom, ALMNS, which is a civil security association specializing in rescue, aid, training, and some outreach activities. And in terms of research group uh, that who were involved, who have been involved, include CRE, which is a nonprofit organization uh, uniting over 300 researchers specializing specifically on water management, aquatic environment, Estra, and uh, the research uh, group of DEEP, which is a lab focused on, focused on environmental engineering, and uh, as well as the uh, EHESP, which is a kind of a school in France specializing in public health, as well as the laboratory of uh, ecology and natural uh, and awesome pieced hydro systems. So we are becoming more and more interdisciplinary. And in the meantime, we also try to work with social economic actors and to explore more transdisciplinary collaborations with practitioners. So in uh, here, I also introduce one example of our transdisciplinary method is called riverbank walks. So which uh, so the idea is to kind of we do some field work, we invite different socioeconomic actors to walk with us along the riverbank and to discuss uh, to discuss and to exchange with each other and to see the feasibility of 
facing or any other issues that could raise. So our uh, this is an example of our walks, which took place in March 2022, uh, where we gathered uh, in total 13 participants working along the banks of Hon and Son rivers. The walk took uh, one and a half hour. Uh, we visit especially the bathing spots as well as the hotspot of uh, drowning accidents. And uh, we also uh, cross-checked with the intervention database. And uh, this walk as also as a meeting with people uh, also involved in formal contacts and conversation among between them. And uh, we also discussed about uh, more formal meetings in the future. So this is one of our methods to involve um, practitioners working on rivers. So uh, in terms of some of our results, so this is also uh, kind of preliminary, but uh, we are still producing more. So the first knowledge production focus on drawings, uh, we have first a master and a PhD thesis uh, focus studying the drawing incidents and uh, the demographics of drawing uh, people in Lyon. Uh, the one, uh, the newest publication has been just published uh, this year about uh, who are those people drawn in the rivers and where is the kind of the hotspot of people got drawn uh, in the river and uh, what are uh, the reason they, they were drawn. And then we had reliability of testimonies as well as field work to see, uh, to test the, the location and the victim characteristics and to find the rescue strategies. And to follow up, uh, we have a new PhD thesis funded by uh, ARCO project. ARCO project is, uh, is the acronym for assistance in the research for victims in watercourse. And this is a project funded by um, the French National Research Agency. So we have a follow-up PhD thesis to continue study this topic. And another uh, PhD thesis is uh, conducted by University of Liège, as well as uh, other labs to have also studied the drowning victims in rivers and with 2D hydraulic models and uh, focusing also uh, on the force on victims and to see uh, the drift of the victim of river drowning and uh, to find uh, also the aim is to find ways to how to rescue victims. And we also have a new follow up, uh, the second PhD thesis, continue modeling victim trajectories which is also funded by the ARCO project. And to follow up, we are also trying to collaborate with the Forensic, forensic, forensic Medicine uh, School of Lyon to study uh, more the characters of victims and to understand how and why they get drawn. So the knowledge uh, production focus two uh, is about more interpolate disciplinary collaboration on this uh, urban river swimming is this focus more on the management and the governance of of urban river bathing so we have this topic about bathing of tomorrow as you know in, in Lyon uh, bathing or swimming in the river is forbidden but uh, so it's forbidden for now but uh, so we did uh, two kind of public surveys to the general public to understand what they perceive and what they want for urban river basing in Lyon. So this uh, were carried out by master and bachelor students from University of Lyon 2 and uh, 3 as a school project. And also uh, our PhD student has done a public survey uh, in a large scale in Lyon to further analyze uh, this public perception of this uh, urban river bathing. And we also studied the history of swimming or drowning in Lyon uh, 
and as well as the lesson learned, what we can learn from the history to better manage the, the possibly manage the urban river basin in Lyon in future, which was down to mass, uh, which was done by two master theses in Lyon. And in 2020, in 2022, we have a national conference in, we had a national conference in Lyon, uh, which is titled Crossed Perspectives on Urban Swimming or Bathing. We invite so different researchers and practitioners to discuss this issue from also multiple disciplines. And a follow-up seminar was uh, held at ES, which is the School for Advanced Studies in Social Science in Paris, called uh, Swimming a Social History uh, in 2023. And two presentations were made by <clears throat> our studios. So <clears throat> for the future development of this uh, focus, we will uh, we already submitted the PPR project called Blue River 2050, which involves e 11 labs, including five <clears throat> from the studio. And uh, we also have project going on water quality measurement. And this is furthered by my joining of the studio uh, as a postdoc project from environmental science perspective to study to first uh, have a kind of a summary of the studio's past work, but also to explore swimming or bathing in other European cities. So we will jump, we will uh, scale up our research scope to other European cities and to learn from their experience. So the next, so I will talk shortly, talk about this uh, conference we had in Lyon in 2022 where we gathered in total uh, 35 participants as well as students. So this is a really also trans, let's say transdisciplinary uh, conference where we have researchers as well as socioeconomic actors. So researchers uh, are mainly from different universities in France and social economic actors are from also different cities as well as some local actors in Lyon as well as national actors as I introduced VNF and uh, ODF etc. So uh, I will then talk about a little bit about my project of extending the scope to European cities. So the background of my study is uh, in 2006 uh, EU has issued this bathing water directive, which serves as a legal framework to the bathing water quality management for all European Union cities, uh, countries. And so it sets the standards for monitoring and the classification of the bathing water quality from excellent to poor. So as you can see on the right left, this is a graph from this year, no, last year's uh, bathing water quality report in Europe. So as you can see, uh, this is the percentage of excellent bathing water quality in Europe. So you can see uh, the first, for example, is Cyprus has very, very excellent water quality, following by Austria and Croatia. Greece, extra, extra, and uh, the European uh, average is 85% of bathing waters are considered uh, excellent for bathing in all European countries. So bathing is generally safe in most of the Europe's bathing waters. In 2023, almost 85% uh, of bathing waters were excellent, while 96 of waters met the minimum quality standards. However, the quality, so bathing waters in Europe, uh, it includes both coastal waters as well as inland waters. So the report also revealed that the quality of coastal bathing waters is generally better than that of rivers and lakes. In 2023, around 89% of coastal bathing waters in the EU were excellent compared with only 79% of inland bathing waters. And the main uh, pollution risk is to 
especially inland basin water is the increased heavy rainfall linked to climate change, which could impact basin water quality very negatively, and uh, which will also potentially increase the health risks for bathers. So as, um, as I just talked about, there have been many social movements to revive river swimming or river basin in cities, especially in Europe. So this is a, a very also famous project uh, implemented in very top-down method in Paris with to uh, have the Olympic Games this summer uh, to make the Seine River swimmable again. So Paris, as they already did this summer, they hosted uh, swimming competitions in the Seine. And the further objective is to realize public bathing in the Seine in 2025, so next year. So to realize this, to make it happen, Paris has heavily invested in cleaning up the River Seine since 2015. And their measures including includes like creating a storage water tanks on the riverside, renovating wastewater treatment stations, improve the sewage connections, prohibit sewage from discharge from the ships, increase vegetation to ensure rainwater sucks into the soil, etc. So as you can see, uh, all it's to make a river swimmable again actually includes many aspects and it requires like a renovation of all the infrastructures at the city scale. So here I also put a photo from the mayor of Paris who just passed uh, in July herself. So, and as you can see in the summer, Paris has successfully uh, hosted some swimming competitions in the River Seine. So the next step is to make it open for public for next year. So on the other hand, there are also bottom-up movements to try to reclaim the right from the people to swim or bathe in the rivers uh, all over Europe. So here I gave some examples. First is maybe also the oldest. It's called Big Jump, which is uh, like a European pan-European network launched in 2002. It has attracted around uh, more than uh, 200,000 participants in over more than 2,000 events across 34 countries. So the idea is to to encourage people to jump into the river in the summer. Uh, but many are, some are legal, some are, in, are illegal, right? It's more a, uh, uh, like a public in, engagement activity. And the uh, second is the Outdoor Swimming Society based in the UK. It was founded in 2006. Uh, and this website, it also has published some books. They provide information about wild swimming information uh, all, all across Europe. And the third uh, is the one actually I uh, just interacted this summer. It's a swimming club at Danube Canal in Vienna. It's a nonprofit association. They try to revive urban swimming in Vienna's Danube Canal. It was funded in 2020, but it grows very fast with now uh, covering about 300 members. And also in 2019, there was a swim city exhibition in Basel in Switzerland, which presents, introduce uh, about, introduce the urban swimming traditions all over Switzerland. As you might know, uh, swimming in the rivers or lakes is very common in Switzerland and it's uh, it's also especially almost uh, everywhere allowed, which is uh, very unique in a European contest. And so this exhibition uh, was hosted at a at the swim a Swiss agricultural museum in Basel. And uh, the other project is called Who is Cool or Flow, which is also a nonprofit association in Brussels. 
So with the local communities, they co-designed Brussels' first outdoor swimming pool located um, along the Brussels Charleroi Canal. Uh, although it's like a elevated on the river, it's not really in the river, but it's opened in 2021 as also Brussels' first outdoor swimming pool because Brussels is a city without mainly uh, water space for people to swim in. And the newest is a alien called Swimmable Cities, uh, which is which was founded actually this year. It's a glo growing global network of expert researchers, activists in urban swimming designs, community, community building, policy, safety, public health, river restoration, etc. So they cover lots of topic related to this urban uh, water swimming. And their objective is to also reclaim the right of swimming the in the waters in the cities. So my uh, post- uh, Yishin, Yishin, sorry, can I just interrupt? Uh, can I give you five more minutes so we have enough time for discussion? Sure. And can I you wrap will... up within five minutes? Sure, I, I will also uh, uh, finish soon. So my project, uh, the first, so there are two parts of my project. First is to create a typology of urban river bathing in Europe. So with my failed investigation this summer in uh, more than 10 European cities and interviews with more than 20 different actors, including the municipalities, environmental agencies, pool managers, lifeguards, NGOs, and uh, environmental activists. So the idea so the key question of this study is to understand how can urban river bathing be managed to ensure equitable, inclusive access, adapt to variable river ecosystems, align with sustainable urban development and collaborative water governance. And the second part of my uh, postdoc project is to create a synthesis of urban river bathing. So. <clears throat> We focus this seven aspects about urban river basin. As we know, uh, it's a very inter and transdisciplinary topic, uh, including history, safety, social movement, urban planning, biodiversity, water quality, the legal aspect, regulation, etc. So the aim of this project is to identify urban river basing opportunities and challenges. And we are now working on a collective publications uh, targeting uh, interdisciplinary journals. So to conclude, so urban river basing is an innovative and inspiring topic that promotes rivers as a common good and drives sustain sustainable urban development. And our studio in Lyon has strong support from different research groups, as well as Lyon-based uh, initiatives. And uh, we also require sustained commitment for continued progress. And for future, we look forward for, uh, we look forward more fundings to ensure the long-term studies. And our studio uh, uh, started as an interdisciplinary collective, and we are now uh, trying to have more participation from socioeconomic actors to forming a more transdisciplinary uh, method. So in the end, we also want to alert uh, the importance of maintaining the researcher's role rather than the activist and ensure more neutral and just research on this topic uh, of river bathing in the future. And we also also want to discuss with you how we might be able to collaborate with uh, River City Network as well as uh, the other members. If anyone is interested, we can uh, further discuss more. And so the final uh, is a kind of invitation to all the <clears throat> River City Network friends to a conference in Lyon, which is called IS Rivers, which will take place uh, next year in Lyon. It's an international conference focused on research and actions for rivers. So, of course, uh, all of you are very welcome. And um, maybe we can also discuss with you if we can propose some session uh, or panel discussion with River City Network. And uh, so this conference, um, the good thing is they gathered not only researchers, but also many practitioners, 
decision makers is Doha, and the official language of the event is English and French, so uh, English is totally fine. And uh, so that's all from my presentation. And if you have any questions, you can uh, refer to our web page as well as my con con contacts. Thank you very much.